Well, one of our subscribers, viewers, anyway, uh, asked the question, do you have any tips on how to avoid mixing muddy colors? Well, sometimes you might want to avoid and sometimes not. Let's explore the myth. Some of the most brilliant paintings I've seen uh, were actually done from a palette that had all kinds of muddy colors on it, but the artist knew what he was doing. There's a myth about mud. The myth says, be careful of mud, don't mix mud. But then there's another school of thought that says mud can be beautiful. Now if you think about the colors in nature, many of the colors we will make, like in the winter scenes, would mean mixing colors that would be characterized as mud. Well, I know what you mean by mud. And one reason you get what we call mud is that you overbrush. You, first of all, we start with colors that are really, really different from each other. Let's just make some mud. I'm going to reach over for white first. Let's just make some mud and let's say, oh, we'll just randomly, I'll just bring this over here and I'll start out with something like this. And then I begin to add something like this. And, for, and then all of a sudden, it feels muddy. It just really feels muddy. Add a little bit of this. And then, there you go. Muddy, 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 muddy. Now notice something. The more I do this, the muddier it gets. So one, re one way mud, or the, or the feeling of mud happens in a painting, is that what's happening right here has way too much mixing going on. Because every time you pull that brush for the paint, you, mu you um, mesh together all those little particles of paint and they become homogenized. The more homogenized they are, the muddier they get. So there's one way that you get mud. And sometimes people are getting mud because they're not really, uh, they don't really have plan the colors are mixing together, I'm not paying attention to what colors are doing to each other. Now I'm going to rinse the brush off and I want to show you something here. Maybe I should make a stroke of that, but we'll do that later. I want to show you something. If I know what I'm reaching for, and if I know what value I'm going for, I can pull my paint, my brush into those colors and the result will not be muddy. Now let me show you what I mean by that. So I'll start the same way as I did before. And let's say I'm looking at this photo, or I'm out here in nature looking at these colors, and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to aim something, aim for something that's in the neighborhood of the hues I'm seeing in those colors. And let's say I'm looking at this value right here. Well then I would know that I need to start with something that's relatively warm, because this is warm. And so I would start here, and then I would know I need to do something to sort of cool it just a little bit. So I might reach in for a color that's a bit cooler like that and pull into it, but not stroke it very much. Stroke it just enough to get it in the brush, and then when I make that stroke here, I will end up with a color that doesn't feel muddy, but it it doesn't really say mud or not mud in when it's located just in a space by itself, it's got to have something to relate to it. Alright, suppose I put another color, a little bit lighter value, and I just pull just enough and put it beside it. Now I begin to get a color relationship. It doesn't feel muddy. But, if I do this, and again, let me reach for the, the white and let's do this sort of thing. All right, so I do this, and I just sort of randomly put that color down, and I said, that doesn't look right, so I'll go over here, and I'll add something else to it, maybe add some blue to it, just sort of guessing, and I do this, and I said, 
uh, that doesn't look right. And then maybe I'll say, well, it needs a little bit of that. And I'll play around like that in it and I'll do this. And then first thing I know, I've got a muddy mess. Well, that muddy mess is lacking two things. It's lacking the feeling of hue, and it's lacking the feeling of value contrast. Right? Watch this. If then, the princess brush off. If then, even having done all that brush stroking and all that mixing and no planning, just reaching for one color and throw it into another, which is what a lot of people will do, um, even though I've done that and I've got that mess, I can still clear it up. And this is what we forget sometimes. Value contrast. What's really enabling us to see that is value contrast. That's one thing. So let's get a little value contrast. And I'm going to reach for a dark version of this. Put it in the brush. And let's reach for just a little bit of a dark version of that blue I reached for. for and put that in the brush. And if I just put that right there, I already have clarity. There's value contrast there that brings that into a clarity. So one way, when you, if you have mud in your painting, one way that you can get rid of that mud is look for where you need value contrast. Now value contrast doesn't have, have to be extreme. Uh, let's just make it extreme. There's an extreme value contrast. If I just if I low, if I uh, make that contrast a little bit closer, and put another stroke here, that's contrast. You see now I've got clarity. I no longer have mud. So that's one thing. Then another thing is to watch the temperature of the color. Usually uh, a scene is going to be lit under one kind of light, and the temp overall temperature is going to be either leaning towards cool or towards some warm so that temperature needs to be consistent if I throw a, a gray that's a cool in there like that like here that's going to feel muddy but if I keep that temperature if I keep it more on the warm side but make it cooler like this there, that feels more consistent with the temperature. Now, if I have just a little bit of that cool showing in there, but a predominance of warm, like this, then I've got that variation in temperature, and I can keep it clear. So the value contrast makes a difference. Another way, another thing is, load, when you're loading the brush, I've already talked about that some, but when you're loading the brush, don't load it with so thick, such thick paint that you have no control of it when it goes here on the canvas. So if you if you have your brush loaded up, oh, uh, let's see if I can do that. Let's pull some of this in here. Let's just say I'm going to load it. This is I've seen this so many times. You load that brush up. You got it so gunky with paint, and and that's what you've got there. Such is just loaded with gunk, like that. Then, when you put the color down here, you really have no control over how much color or where are uh, how the color is going to go on the canvas because you've got such gunk built up into the brush that anything can happen on the canvas. Now, if <laughs> the master artists who know how to do that who know how to control the amount of color that's in their brush might be able to get away with that. But if you just keep loading the brush without controlling it, just keep adding paint into it. I'm trying to mimic what I've seen other people do. <laughs> Here we go. Mud, 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 mud. You see, then, then you're just going to get mud. But if you do this. Now, even the rinsing the brush out is always a good idea. And when you rinse the brush out, you want to be sure it's thoroughly dry so that you have control over the wetness of the paint. Then, when you load your colors, let's see if I've got enough pure color here that I can do this. Then when you load your colors, we'll pull some of this 
say orange in there and I'll put just enough in there to get that this value and let's say I wanted to add a little bit of the blue into that and kind of lean it towards green all right I pull just enough of that into the brush now watch what I'm doing here I've got the brush loaded right here just enough color enough paint in the brush to go onto the canvas I have control and by pulling one stroke can you see in there the color is broken just enough by making that one stroke it's not going to be muddy you see that but but if I continue to do this over and over and over and over and over again I want you to notice the difference this loses it loses its vibrancy so train find your training of how to mix the color load the brush uh, according to the colors that you need and control the amount of paint you put in the brush as far as the way the paint's going to behave and then if you do end up with passages that are beginning to feel muddy you and, and also if it's if it's still within that color range that you want look for value contrast uh, or even look for adding some uh, more saturated color into it now I can show you something here I just thought about that so let's just do it I pull a little bit of saturated color into the brush scumble over that and you see now how that has has that brilliance to it just by scumbling a little bit of more saturated color into the more muddy color then we get the life of the paint or the life of the color back into the paint so it's just ma a matter of practicing good mixing habits of, of mis mixing your paint according to what color does to color and according to what value does to value not just guessing there's plenty of uh, information out there about uh, how to mix color so it's just a matter of being willing to uh, train yourself to mix according to what color does to color and what value does to value avoid over mixing uh, vo avoid guessing and also look for where there's value contrast so you can see the difference here is we have color we have value contrast and we have the same temperature or being in the same temperature ranges and by doing all that you're going to find you can use mud or what people normally call mud but your mud would be nice and vibrant it won't be mud anymore then it will just be color be sure and view all of our quick tips. And while you're doing so, subscribe to the channel, click on the bell, so you'll always get a notice when we produce a new quick tip, which is every week. And if you have a question, leave it in the comments section, and we'll make a quick tip for you. Also, take a trip over to DyingMinds.com, where I have full-length lessons, downloads, DVDs, lots of other stuff there, some free stuff for you. And while you're there, you can subscribe to the newsletter, and that way you'll always be informed every time we do something new.